Okay, boys and girls. So uh, my name is Wayne Pedruzic. Pleasure to meet you. I'll give you a little bit about myself in a bit. Um, tonight, I'm going to be presenting, I've titled it, from uh, Education is Indoctrination, sort of tiptoeing through from uh, essentially Socrates till now, how we got here. And then I'm going to give what I see as a recipe for academics to get us back, okay? And the recipe is essentially 10 principles. We can call them ethical principles, except I don't believe in ethics, although they were based on Clifford's uh, ethics of belief. Um, that uh, will take us back from uh, what I see now as a much more indoctrinative system to something that would be much more educative, in my opinion. <laughs> now, I was asked whether or not I want all the questions at the end. It doesn't have to be, unless it just keeps breaking up everything. So if somebody wants to stop me at any point and say, excuse me, that makes no sense, I'm totally good with that. Um, <clears throat> and at the end, uh, I don't know how, much, how long this will take, 45 minutes to an hour, I suspect. And then after that, we're good, okay? So all the questions, all the uh, counter arguments and that sort of thing, uh, more than welcome, okay? Uh, so first of all, a little bit of a prelude, uh, or first of all, do an agenda, sorry. This is, of course, just an overview of what we'll be doing. Uh, so I'll give you a bit of a prelude and then we'll tiptoe through a little bit of history, essentially from Socrates to today in the sensorious impulse, because all the way along we have a long and glorified history of censorship, where we don't let anybody else say things that we don't want them to say in some variant. And sometimes they're a little more violent, sometimes they're a little less violent. Today we don't take people out and burn them at the stake. However, we will do things like ruin their careers, or get them fired from university, or get them expelled. Right? If somebody takes too much of offense and some reasonable person decided that that wasn't reasonable enough. Um, and then I'll look at a bunch of fundamental principles. Uh, two of them are essentially, one of them is uh, feelings, uh, not facts. Right. So uh, today, a lot of what we base our things on is feelings. And we ignore facts. Indeed, there was a Supreme Court decision that said if it's going to bring approbation to a particular group, even if you tell the truth about them, they can bring you to court and you can get charged under the hate speech law, which I think is a little bit frightening if we're going to give up. Hello, if we're going to give up truth for feelings, right? So anyway, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And another thing is, especially for students, although this also does apply to faculty and staff and that sort of thing, uh, the university and the state has decided to take on a bit of a, uh, a role as in loco parentis, which means they function as your parents. Um, and that was really big in the 60s, uh, for example, for females uh, living in residences in universities where they had to be in by 11 o'clock at night. Guys could do whatever they want, of course, but girls had to be in it by 11 o'clock at night and so on because the universities were functioning as, uh, as their parents and taking care of them. And we get some bleed over on that now uh, with some of the legislation that's come out and some of the Supreme Court decisions and some of the provincial um, social justice tribunal type decisions. So that's a little bit scary. So we'll talk a little bit about what that means to faculty and students. And then at the end, I am going to suggest uh, that we need to take some fairly strong action, at least as it comes to academics. Uh, and I think that this for sure, for sure, should be for uh, faculty members in any academic community. Uh, this is where I think we'll have the most fun at the end uh, when we're doing the question and answer period. Um, the other stuff I don't see as being <coughs> terribly uh, controversial. Um, and I actually believe that ultimately this is important to save democracy. And I know that's making a large claim, uh, but I do think so. When you look at uh, some of the election results and things like that that have occurred in various parts of the world, it doesn't seem as though uh, people who are meant to be educated uh, think all that well. And part of it is because, as you were mentioning earlier, uh, we're actually not necessarily taught to think. We're taught to essentially take information in and regurgitate it and that sort of thing. So we'll cover that in little bits. <clears throat> First, I've got to say I'm, I'm honored that I was asked to do this, um, as a little bit scary as it is. 
um, because you guys are giving up one of your most precious resources, and that, of course, is time. You ain't getting this time back, okay? And so I'm, I'm very touched that people would come in and actually listen to me talk for like an hour, you question me for an hour and a half. <clears throat> the other thing I want to mention at this point is that uh, when I decided to do this, I had a couple of faculty members caution me uh, that I need to be careful not to jeopardize my career. And that, I think, is a telling uh, statement. If people are coming up to me and saying, look, you know, just be careful, uh, that, I think, speaks somewhat. And that wasn't me. I wasn't telling that to myself. Right? That speaks <laughs> somewhat to what a lot of people think. I mean, there's only two, but they did it spontaneously. I didn't go up and say, what do you think? Okay? I wish to take you along. We're going to hell. <laughs> okay. Um, so that sort of leaves that groundwork. Um, and I was asked by a couple of folks, Amanda and Amanda, uh, if I would do this. And I said yes. And when we get to the end and I go through the principles, you'll know why. Because I believe it is actually a, an obligation of faculty members who espouse any particular point of view or belief to have to uh, present them and defend them in public. Okay? Because otherwise you just do it in classrooms, you do it in hallways and things like that. And I personally have problems with that. Just saying. Okay. So, this is a quote, one of my favorite ones by Thomas Paine. And this is, if you are trained in any way not to be truthful, this essentially leaves the groundwork for all other moral corruption. Huh? And, I, and this was uh, uh, from his book, The Age of Reason. Huh? And uh, has anybody here read that out of curiosity? No, okay, I, I highly recommend it, of course. <clears throat> so they are beginning with perjury. Can we conceive of anything more destructive to morality than this? And I can't. And although I don't believe in, which we just talked about, I don't believe in morality, I don't believe in ethics, most people do. And we operate as though we were an ethic, and I believe that we should operate as though we were an ethic. I don't, don't think there really is one. Okay. The second thing is, given that we are in a position where we have to be deceitful, because of course there are consequences for not being deceitful, often, um, we, if we want to perform a revolutionary act, telling the truth really is a revolutionary act under these kinds of circumstances. Telling your opinion as it actually is. Now, can we tell our opinion as it actually is? I'll let you guys think. If you uh, were in a position where you were going to sort of interface with somebody uh, in a classroom or in somewhere where you'd be observed or videoed, you know, what kinds of things would you or would you not say? That's what you have to ask yourself. And why and why not? Okay. <clears throat> so a little history about the censorious attitude. And I'm just going to punch through a number of these. I'm sure most of you know most of them. But certainly, uh, Socrates 399, he was executed for questioning the existence of the gods. And I put Zeus and the boys and girls here, uh, because I'm not going to name all of them. There were a few. Right? Um, and then ultimately, he got to drink uh, uh, hemlock for corrupting the youth of Athens. Then we'll go to Hypatia, 415. Now, I'm jumping. Large numbers of people, of course. How many people know who Hypatia is? Okay, so Hypatia is one of my heroes, actually. So uh, she was a pagan mathematician, philosopher, astronomer, um, and she was accosted by a group of monks, and she refused to acknowledge the existence of the Christian God and his, his all powerfulness and all this kind of stuff. So they dragged her through the streets, uh, they flayed her alive, and they finally burnt her. Okay? Uh, and don't forget, we talk about we're living in a, a, we work and exist in a university. And we think about the university people as some of the most educated people on the planet, right? Most of us have PhDs or whatever it is we have, right? And yet, these at that time were the most educated people of the day. Right? So if you have a belief, like with any kind of fervor that you're willing to follow, this seems to be able to follow as well. And I love this, uh, uh, this is a quote from my patient. Reserve your right to think, for even to think wrongly is better than not to think at all. Oh, it just gives me goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a little more. Maximus the Confessor had a little dispute with the church. Um, he believed that uh, Christ had only one will, even though he had two uh, forms. He was, had uh, a divine form and a human form, but he still only had one will. 
This went against the doctrine of the church, and uh, who had uh, uh, di uh, diophilism, right? Two wills, uh, one human and one divine, and to prevent him from propagating his uh, his beliefs of preaching or whatever, uh, they cut off his fingers and cut his tongue. Therefore, he couldn't write and he couldn't preach. So, good way to silence people. We have other ways of doing it today, but same thing. Now, this one is on the other side of it. Al-Ghazali was a very influential uh, Islamic cleric, uh, philosopher. I believe he was a physician as well, but don't hold my feet to the fire on that one. And he came up with a doctrine called Zakara. And Zakara was secret apostasy. And I want you to think about it in terms of the way our laws in this province are written and our policies are written as well for the university. And this is, if you made a statement that somebody took as not being in accordance with Islamic, uh, the Islamic tradition, right? even if you didn't mean it not, even if your intention was not to do it, even if you were just promote, uh, 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 predicating it for an argument, then you could be brought, you would be reported, Right, to the speech police. You would be taken in front of a, um, a uh, where did I write it down? A Kaudi, I don't know how to pronounce that. If anybody here speaks Persian, I'll be good with it. Kurudia. 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 Okay, now I know. If I ever do it. No, actually, Kurudia. Okay, I can't say one of those sounds, but I'll, I'll, go, I'll go with what it is that you said, okay? Uh, anyway, a, essentially a, a, a clerical judge who would pronounce sentence on you. Okay, and that sentence, of course, for apostasy in Islam, uh, you can be sentenced to death. death. Also called death. Okay. Um, now, this was done just at the height of what you can think of as the Islamic Golden Age, where they were in the forefront of math, uh, science, um, philosophy, um, um, uh, medicine. Okay. And after this, right, because no one was willing to step outside of those very narrow boundaries, within about 100 years, the golden age in Islam was over. Now, I wrote down here, post hoc ergo propter hoc with a question mark, and we all know what that means, right? After this, therefore because of this. So it's the correlation does not mean causation. Okay. So anyway, so now what we're doing is we're finding in the Western tradition a narrowing of what it is that we can reasonably discuss, a narrowing of uh, how our conversations have to go, what research we can do, and that kind of stuff. And I, I just wonder if we're not kind of on the edge of this kind of thing for our own development, uh, where if it gets taken too far, of course, then our progress is likely going to be Okay, a few others, and we all know about the Inquisition. Uh, there was the Spanish Inquisition, Portuguese Inquisition, and French Inquisition. Um, and these pursued heretics by the Roman Catholic, the Holy Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church. I used to be an altar boy, I can handle this. Um, and it was supported by various governments, uh, France, Spain, Portugal, and so on. And indeed, as I was just uh, talking, they had a grand inquisitor uh, that was established uh, in the Vatican, and essentially uh, the Dominicans um, worked for him, and they were the ones that would interview people who were accused of heresy or being a witch or whatever else it was, and they'd deconstruct their arguments. And uh, there were two books, of course, the Malus Maleficarum. How many people have heard of that one? And Invectives Against the Waldessians. How many people have heard of that one? No, those were two of the main texts that they used in the interrogation and deciding how we could tell if something was a witch or not, and so on. Anyway, um, uh, that position was just discontinued in the late 1800s. So the Grand Inquisitor went the whole way. And of course, the, most of the Inquisitions were done by the, um, uh, done by the Dominicans, the black robe ones. Then, we all know about Galileo, uh, took a heliocentric view as opposed to a, a geocentric view of the universe, more of a Copernican view, and uh, ended up, uh, declared a heretic, ended up under host arrest for the rest of his life. Uh, 
McCarthy trials, we all know about the McCarthy trials. Uh, anyone who dared to espouse anything that remotely resembled Marxism uh, was brought in front of the uh, Committee of Un-American Activities. Uh, and although they weren't sent to jail or anything like that, uh, they were often, their uh, careers were often destroyed. And so you can say, oh, well, I guess, you know, it wasn't as bad. Well, you destroy someone's career. Well, I think that's kind of bad. I could be wrong. It's not, it's not as bad as, what? Some people were actually put in prison. Oh, were they? Yeah. Okay, so I stand corrected. Apparently some folks were actually put in prison. Was that maintained or did, were they let out after the... Oh, I'll have to look that up. Okay, I'm sorry, uh, an error, but thank you. Yeah. Your wife, I'm supposed yeah. to. You're supposed to. You're supposed to point out when I'm wrong, and she does it so well, don't you think? Okay. Um, uh, then we have the Dix, Dix, Dixie Chicks uh, in 2003, uh, just before Bush the uh, Second was um, uh, having his forces invade Iraq, who said that uh, they didn't want that war and they were ashamed of Bush. Uh, their careers essentially were trashed between 2003 and 2013, where no one would touch them, that sort of thing, that kind of censorship within the, uh, within the industry. Right? Not terribly good. Uh, we've all heard about Charlie Hebdo, uh, 2015, 12 killed, uh, 11 wounded, uh, based on some cartoons. And uh, this is sort of a little bit of a slide for that, but that certainly was a free speech issue, in my opinion, right? And I was around at that time, and as far as I could tell, the universities had nothing to say. I, I heard nothing from this university from our illustrious leadership team saying, whoa, that's kind of a bad thing. Didn't hear anything like that. Didn't, have, didn't see any other faculty member Take any position at all, or take any position at all on that, right? Which I found disheartening, right? So I did take a position, and for a bunch of days, and I'm not doing this, okay? For a bunch of days, I built this T-shirt, and I wore it around, and I was actually told by a couple of faculty members that maybe I shouldn't be doing that. Why not? <laughs> So, just I, don't understand uh, I am sure. Right, just be sure. And what is the word controversy? I do not know that. Okay, so what happened was they published uh, some cartoons that depicted Mohammed. Uh, two brothers went in to Hebdo, uh, shot, killed 12 people, uh, oh, yeah, injured 11 means, more. Yeah, yeah. And notice on here as well, I have another name. And the name is? Mbala. Mbala. And the reason that's on there is because Mbala said about them, I kind of feel like these people, like I've been insulted. And he was immediately arrested by the uh, French uh, police and held in jail and interrogated. So, right, both sides of it. You have, if you're free speech, you're free speech. Mm -hmm. Right? My opinion. Okay. <clears throat> but the disheartening part was I didn't hear anything from anybody else in the academic community. Right. My opinion is that posters like that should have been plastered all over our walls. Right? So why not? Either they were good with it, and they thought, oh, maybe not a bad thing. Well, people did. Maybe they'll teach them a lesson. Right? Teach them to flaunt the privilege. Right? Or they were cowards. Pick one. I don't want it. So, okay, moving on. Maybe, maybe those are the kinds of things people is there a third option? suggesting. Um, there might be a third option. Isn't it all about money? They might, it might be around money, but then it's still that's a cowardice, in my yeah. opinion, because okay. they don't want to lose whatever yeah. revenue yeah. or something. And I'm sorry, you know, uh, if you believe in this stuff, we're, we're meant to stand up for free speech in an academic community, I suspect. Mm -hmm then you put your ass on the line, in my opinion, right? Otherwise, you're letting other people put their ass on the line. What's that called? Ass by proxy. Right? <laughs> okay, anyway, moving along. So our current trend um, in universities, you don't often hear debates or positions put forward that are counter PC culture, right? There are consequences for that. And so I, I ask all my students, all my classes, 
I, how many people, if your professor said something sort of along the creasy line that you disagreed with, would you say, excuse me, you know, I don't think so, and actually debate with them? And in most of my classes, I get no one. Periodically, I get someone, this gentleman put up his hand, there was another woman in you know, one of my other classes put up her hand. Uh, but for the most part, people don't really want to say anything, and we have to ask ourselves why. I, I find that a little bit frightening. I, and this keeps going on, right? So today we've got, if you follow any of the news, defunding, deep deplatforming, deep and so on. Uh, at this university, I wrote a letter that didn't actually get published in our local student newspaper about the Christian group who wanted a um, who wanted a, a club funded, and they were defunded. And then there was a bit of an uproar. And I don't know if they ever did fund them again, right? But I thought that was atrocious. You need to fund people even if they have positions that are different from yours or you don't fund anybody, right? So uh, anyway, I, I found that a little bit uh, troubling again. So uh, we also have people who run off regularly to the thought police. These are the human rights and justice tribunals or whatever the hell they're called in universities. Different universities call them different things uh, that do investigations and actually can take you up and have you bled to death or something, okay? Metaphorically, of course. Uh, and my opinion is, this treats all of us kind of like children, right? We're adults, right? If somebody says something that I find offensive, I can tell you. You know what, buddy? Sorry, no wrong response. Hello. Uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I'm saying hi. Okay. So this really turns us sort of into people that are being nanny. And uh, we, we, we uh, get to and, and it's funded, it's uh, supported by the state. In Australia right now, there are uh, placards up and posters up that if anybody offends you by anything they say, you're to call, you're call the police. How frightening that, right? This is kind of like the Stasi in Eastern uh, Germany where three out of five people would report you to the police if you said anything that they didn't like or was anti-communist or anything like that. Same shit, okay? How far are you willing to take that, Wayne? Um, How far are we willing to take what? This position here about... If there's an act... Yeah, the power differentials make a huge difference. Yep. So somebody could be feeling they've, they've been um, assaulted or disregarded. Mm -hmm. If there's a power differential there, the only way they can fight it is to bring the right or some other state like yeah, I accept that. Oh, go ahead. I'll, I'll come back. And yes. Kind of broken the other thing because this guy is like a young of yours. So this happened to me. I was on a three to one, and there was this guy who kept on. I don't know what a three to one is. Oh, it's a bus. Oh, it's a bus. <laughs> it's Sorry. It's a okay. bus going to White Cross okay. from here. Okay. Yeah, I take it every day. Okay. So there was this guy over there who kept on yelling um, homophobic slurs towards me. Wish he had a stone so he could stone me. Like it got to the point that I rushed out of the I just left the bus. Mm -hmm. Now with that, now if there was a police like like I did report that to the police. Mm -hmm. But would you say that free speech would Okay, you know what we get, we get speech. along really good because if somebody's directly threatening you. That actually is assault. It wasn't a direct threat. Well, I wish I had stones so I could kill you. It was pretty threatening to me. Like, throw it at you. Kill you and, but he was like going towards the community and and like looking at me mm -hmm. while attacking the community. Mm -hmm. So I felt pretty threatened. Yes. So it does that time to free speech and you should be allowed free speech. Well, you see, there are, there are two levels to this. And I'm coming back to that. There are two levels to this. What is sort of what happens within the academic community? And I assume here that we're not talking about physical threats and physical harm. No, no, no. Here we're just talking about, um, uh, we're talking about a, a person's right to say things, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, toward what you said, if there are actions that are taken on the basis of that, i.e., I say uh, we shouldn't hire any women, and it turns out that we're not hiring any women, that is something I think that should be taken somewhere. But the fact that I said, I'm really not sure that we should be hiring women. I'm not sure that should necessarily be taken anywhere, right? Because now we get into finer and finer graduations 
what is it that you're going to find? Uh, what is it you're going to find offensive? What is it you're going to find threatening and things like that? And I'm going to come to a Supreme Court Canada <coughs> decision shortly, where we're going to talk a little bit about that, sir. Okay, I sense that you. I think that you say that I believe you should not fire any women. And then I don't I mean, actually believe that. Right? But, but, and we'll get to that yeah. later. Yeah, but yeah. I'm like taking okay. your example. Right. Like say, yeah. I don't believe you should hire women. Yeah. And then you are banned from being in the hiring committee. Because you verbally said, I do not want to hire this one whole like, part of the community. Would that time be free speech too? Um, you know what? If I had said that and we were doing a hiring process, then I think you could exclude me from, from doing that. But I don't think you can hold me in front of the committee and get my ass on it. Yeah, that makes sense, but then, like, okay, yeah. No, I mean, we can, we can slice and dice this because you can get finer and finer graduation, and eventually you'll find a place at which, right, it becomes a little ludicrous something you have to say yes. But as a general principle, mm -hmm. I think I am, and I'm not going for, I'm not going to present an absolutist free speech position okay. in this talk. That's not what this was aimed at. This is meant to uh, address uh, academics and a discussion within academia. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Are you good? I mean, with my answer, I don't mean <laughs> with what, anything I said. But Go on and I'll... I'll you'll, you'll take the tie up later? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it's totally good. That's what, that's what this shit's about. Anyway, so, okay. Um, so, I actually think that if some, just as what's happened here, if somebody says something you disagree with, then you tie up with them. Uh, if there's any action taken because of a power differential, then I think you hold their ass in front of some kind of committee. Right. Carry on. So you can argue that. Okay, I'm gonna. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. No, no. Well, fair you, enough. Yeah. You should have left your privilege right at that door. Absolutely. Yeah, and I don't have to. Fortunately, what privilege? Your wife, your male. Of age. Your faculty. Yeah. yeah. There's all kinds of privilege that you have. I'm actually not serious. Oh. <laughs> 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 but that could be a negative response to this. Yeah, but I've got no problem with that. You're allowed to say it. So it's all very well for someone in your position to have these broad and uh, accepting stances mm -hmm. on issues. Mm -hmm. But when you get someone who's in a minority position, a woman, someone of color, or any other minority, mm -hmm. um, Something very different going on in the dynamic. You may, but because you're a minority speech doesn't speech. mean you don't have power. Yeah, same. Okay. Because yeah. from minority groups, I find the biggest problem is that other people try to speak for us, but we are diverse in our okay. ideas too. Let me take care of this. Okay. <laughs> 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 what I say, no, I do. I say, I'm not serious. No, 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 no. I understand that. Listen, but people do think that. I understand that. Amanda. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, and she was saying things as well. Yeah. I totally get that. Yeah. But that could have been a response to what. It could have been, and, they, and you're allowed to say it. And it would have been a poor one. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't hold your. Not hold, I don't hold your ass. Yeah. I don't hold your ass. Majority doesn't mean right. right. It's fired for. Yes. I was just gonna say that in this situation, you really don't have the power. It's, it's the one with the hurt feelings that's gonna have the power. If you. I'm always telling you that you may be endangering your career by bringing this subject up as a topic of discussion and talk. Well, there's a heckler's veto and there's a hurt feelings veto and there are a whole bunch of those things. And that's part of what we're talking about. So first Bert and then, yeah. I was just gonna offer to help with the projector because it seems Jeff turned off. <laughs> <laughs> he does that. He does that. Yeah, that. Oh, Please. <laughs> Uh, I didn't bring that up. Okay, at like, all. are people like free to say anything? Like, they could say, like, we should teach intelligent design instead. Sure, they can say that, and then they debate it in public, and they get their ass handed to them, and nobody believes them anymore. Alright. Yeah, it's been going on, and many people actually believe they Absolutely. teach intelligent design. Yes, miss. So, do you think that those um, committees that you say people run to when they have hurt feelings have 
a time and a place for other issues that are like what? Um, say there is a a real threat that doesn't have to do with somebody said something. But no, that absolutely. No, no, that, absolutely. If I were to sort of pull out a handgun here and say, oh, I think I'd like to kill somebody, then yes, I think. <laughs> in fact, I wouldn't go to a committee. I'd be dialing 911 right about now. So yeah, of course. And again, we can push this. Right, I'm talking about, right now, I'm talking about sort of free and open debate and discussion. Yeah. Right? Uh, and at this point, I wasn't actually talking about accosting someone, calling them names, uh, telling them that, you know, perhaps they shouldn't exist. I, 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 I was not going there at all. That's a different talk. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, well, what's so that for the next one? Yeah, well, have that other It depends how bruised I am after this one. <laughs> okay. okay. You're basically saying we should be able to talk about Charlie Hababo or, or whomever. In, That's or right. anything. That's Nazi right. Germany That's as right. a discussion. That's right. Not threatening lives. That's right. And we'll, we'll, get, yes, we'll get to this later on where I go through those principles. Okay. And like I think, I think those are going to be the fun bits. Okay, so uh, Wayne's World. So how do, I, <laughs> how do I end up here? Uh, why do I have a lot of the positions that I have? Well, I grew up in the 50s and 60s where I went to school. Uh, most schools that I went to were either parochial Catholic schools uh, or were military schools. Uh, anything that resembled uh, discussion, debate, uh, taking counter positions pretty much was not tolerated. Okay. Um, and that left me with healthy distaste for that kind of, of um, imposition on my right to think, right? Because we were essentially told what to think, right? So uh, we didn't question dogma. And the other thing is, when I was going to religious schools, we had to take religious class. And if you fail religion class, you fail the year. You get 95% in math, English, <laughs> whatever, but you fail religious class, you're screwed, just say. Okay? I hope it's not like that anymore. Um, now, in the middle school, uh, we were actually, we didn't debate religion, but we did uh, debate social issues. So even at that young age, seven, eight, nine, in there, uh, we debated all kinds of things to do with uh, so our uh, Aboriginal brothers and sisters, uh, things like whether or not, and this I use this one because I remember it, because I was uh, actually part of the debate. <coughs> Uh, myself and Colleen took on two of our uh, classmates in terms of whether or not the Acadians uh, should have been expelled to Louisiana, and we were assigned the pro side. And so we got to present what we saw as likely uh, the British rationale for moving them when they were in that conflict with France. Right? And so does it mean it's right? Does it mean it's wrong? No, but we did get to discuss it so you heard both sides of that argument, because right now it's just, oh no, that shouldn't have been done. You must have hurt somebody's feelings, whatever. Okay. Uh, so then, in the 60s, I was originally part of the kind of hippie and the anti-war movement, and uh, that, of course, got us not good things happening to us um, back in the day when essentially they could pretty much do what they wanted. Um, and we weren't conforming to those truths of the day. And at that time, uh, we were called things like bum, beatnik, freaknik, red commie fags. <laughs> That's for peace and freedom, right? I mean, just, it's that kind of thing where they sort of give you a little whack with a crunch and to let us know where we were on the pecking order, which was down here somewhere. By the way, police just address me as sunshine mostly. <laughs> just saying. Okay. <clears throat> so then I went to university uh, in my undergraduate degree in the 1980s uh, as a, a more of an adult student, right? I was 33 when I started. And there was a really strong freedom of speech culture. We debated everything, and I mean everything. Uh, and we could debate them in classes. Uh, the only place we really didn't get a lot of debate was in places like you know, certain social classes and women's studies classes and things like that. There wasn't a lot of debate there. Um, and that was more of the regurgitate the truth stuff. Um, uh, and it was not uncommon to Prof made a comment. And by the way, it wasn't necessarily restricted just to what was in the classroom. If something important was going on, that would often be brought up and that would be discussed in class. Even if it were statistics, if it were a social issue, that would be brought up. That is frowned upon today in terms of you're meant to stick to whatever it is that your class is about. 
and my classic example of that. So let's say, again, we got a fascist government and they started to like pick up uh, people of the Jewish persuasion, put them in concentration camps. Uh, under that kind of guise, the only way I could bring it up in class would be to say things like, there are 1.7 million Jews in Canada. There are 33 million Canadians. What's the probability if you were randomly selected that you now, and, and so it gets really silly in a hurry. But we should be able to address these things. I think education is not just for this kind of pouring things in, right? That we actually have some kind of dialogue back and forth, especially on things that are morally important. But again, I can ask you guys to cast your mind back in your classes. How many times, unless it's specific to that kind of class, do you have these kinds of conversations happening in your class? A lot, actually. Oh, do you? Uh, but I think that's more of a me thing. I'm a loud mouth. But I okay. think Diane can attest to it. Okay. Uh, but then, I mean, you always have the outliers. Sure. Yeah. Okay, you might be an outlier, you might be an outlier, but most of you can cast your mind and just see how often in your classes you have a lot of this kind of stuff. And I'm willing to bet, although I stand to be corrected at any time, as I just have been, that if there's a lot of it, then let me know, because obviously I'm playing in the sandbox mm -hmm. by myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? I, 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 I'm used to playing in the sandbox by myself. It started when I was a child, actually. Yeah. Moving past just that it happens a lot, I think what's significant about me being uh, an outlier in that case is that it's accepted by my professors. Okay. Um, now, I, yet again, that's a very small, like, yeah. Uh, overall and I'll come to that and see if I'm wrong. Yes. But are you guys discussing anything really contentious? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so okay. I have uh, a different perspective. Okay. If I'm taking a course on statistics, mm -hmm. you only want statistics. It's because like if the conversation is off topic happens, I'm gonna get up and tell people to shut up okay. because I'm here to learn something okay. I paid for. It goes like this. Okay. They might you can only you have you can <laughs> only like grind on for most students for about fifteen minutes. Then you have to take a five minute break. Right? During that five minute break, now I've seen most students. You might not be most students. Let's perform some screening before we get to school. No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Anyway, so, okay, fair enough. And that is exactly, um, I was talking to the uh, 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 academic vice president and provost of uh, um, University of British Columbia. And that was exactly her position in terms of t discussing other things in class. That's not what they paid for. That's not what they signed up for. Therefore, you shouldn't do it. Uh, I hold a different position, and I think there should be some latitude around it. You guys can decide there is or isn't. We didn't set it up so you could vote, like, kill the or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too late. <laughs> it's not too late. <laughs> okay, let me, let me finish this off, okay? Uh, so then I came out to UBC, uh, sorry, to uh, Simon Fraser in 1987, and the culture was different. Now, the, the university I went to was in Nova Scotia, and maybe Nova Scotia is a little bit different, I don't know. But out here, all of a sudden, it was very PC, and I was actually stunned. I had culture shock, okay, from coming out here to the university, uh, sorry, to California of the North. Um, and I was actually quite shocked because people wouldn't, and I was told that's not right thinking. So, What's I thinking? Right? Anyway, uh, and so now it became back to the future. Now all of a sudden, the received wisdom could not be challenged. Right? Couldn't fight over it. Right? Um, that's a problem. So I really have healthy distrust and indeed irreverence, as anybody who's been in any of my classes know, for anything that looks like any kind of religious and received truth. And I will make a statement that political correctness, that whole genre, is in fact a religion. And if you want a separate talk on that, I'm good. Okay, because it has all the attributes, it has all the characteristics of a religion. Okay, so a couple of basic principles. These are principles that I hold dear, and people can fight with me on these things if you want to. I believe in an open marketplace of ideas, right? You throw everything out in the marketplace, those that are good will be picked up. Those that are crappy will be squashed to death, all right? 
Um, I don't think that as educated thinking people, and somebody said I'm elitist. Who said elitist? Something about elitism. Okay. I don't hold that. I don't think that I should be framing what it is that you should see or whatever. Right? That's your decision. Right? So an elitist will say, well, you know, maybe not quite bright enough. Let me help. Right? Yeah. I don't believe that. Okay? Uh, and you have to have free speech and open debate. Otherwise, there's no marketplace, there's no open marketplace of ideas. Uh, and in order to have free speech, you have to have the ability uh, and right to be honest and to offend. Offend. That's what I want to do. I want to offend. <laughs> That's how you get the way to the tribunals, right? I never I, said I, I wanted I, to offend. I thought I proofread it, but <laughs> I didn't proofread it well enough. But anyway, you get the idea. Just stick a D on that and we'll call it even. Okay. I just read it as often. Yeah, well, that too. Uh, uh, we need to do it. Okay, we need to be uh, uh, honest often. I'll go with that. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> there. He fixes it. There. You just oh. made it. <laughs> then I, I don't know why it didn't show. Whoa. That's a good joke. Okay, this is why I asked you to send me the PowerPoint. <laughs> now, look, that might have not happened for you. It's just for me. Anyway, moving along. I, I, it was my Darth Vader powers. <laughs> okay. Anyway, moving along. Uh, uh, the other thing that you always have to decide is who decides what's right and wrong, who decides what's offensive, who decides where the line is, who decides what can be said. And I don't know about you guys, but there's nobody on earth that I personally would pick to decide for me. Okay? And not necessarily in terms of what I can say, but in terms of what I can hear. Right? Because free speech is not for the person saying it. Free speech is for the listener. Because if you deny free speech, then you make yourself a prisoner of your own opinion at that time. Okay? That's not me, that's Thomas Paine. I thought I'd cite him, given that I just quoted him. <laughs> Do the academic thing. Okay. Um, so, uh, who then gets to decide? Uh, the Supreme Court of Canada, and this is uh, Ayakabusi, who was one of the ministers, uh, suggested, and it's written into a lot of the uh, social justice kinds of legislation, that it'll be a reasonable person. Well, we know there's no such thing as a reasonable person. And even the legal profession understands that the legal person is a myth. Okay, And if you anybody wants, I've actually got an entire legal journal that is devoted to the... Uh, devoted to the uh, uh, notion of the reasonable person is a myth, right? And yet we use it because otherwise somebody has to sit in judgment. So, so that's one. Uh, so, uh, and, you know, when you think about reasonable people, you can think about the Dominican. They were the most educated at the time. Uh, you can think about uh, grand inquisitors, again, usually often Dominicans. Uh, some were Franciscans. Uh, but again the most uh, educated at the time. Uh, and I don't know if anybody here reads Dostoevsky, uh, Dostoevsky and Solzhenitsyn. Anybody read Solzhenitsyn? Everybody should have to read Solzhenitsyn. The Gulag, uh, Red Circle, Day in the Life, um, Cancer Ward. Okay, you should read these things, particularly the Gulag, right? Because this speaks to a lot of kind of who decides, right? And what, what kinds of punishments or whatever will it mean out. Not a good thing. Uh, so courts are prejudiced as you were in black robes, and I'll just point out that in 1967, the Supreme Court of Canada uh, decided that it was perfectly legal and okay to sentence a gay man to life in prison. Mm. Okay, that was overturned, I believe, in 1972 by Trudeau I. <laughs> well, now we have Trudeau II. <laughs> um, when he made the uh, when he made uh, uh, when he decriminalized uh, homosexual acts, okay. So um, so certainly not them. And I'll actually talk about the Whitecott case in the not too distant future. How many people know the Whitecott case? Nobody. Okay, that's scary. Okay, let's move on. So um, <laughs> I will. I will. I'll get there. I'll get there very shortly. Okay. So. Um, Ultimately, this is what I said to all of you, you have to make up your own mind. You are the only crucible 
of right and wrong. Right? You can't let other people do it for you. You can't abrogate that responsibility, and it is a responsibility. But that means you have to stand up for it as well, in my opinion. Okay? Oh, sorry, yes. How far does, okay, so when you ask the question, who decides on what is right and wrong, what's offensive? Yeah. Are you confining that to the academic context? In this show, oh, generally. Okay. Because okay. academics are not the only ones so, who are hoisted on that petard. But how do we structure uh, life? Okay, that's a bigger question. It is a bigger <laughs> question, <laughs> but it is a logical deal, conclusion. Yeah, we'll deal with that. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, okay. Cool. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> we can play. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, but in order to make up your own mind, you need that interaction. You need the free and open debate. You need the, the information. And the best way to get information is by debating somebody on the other side. Okay? Especially if they're passionate and you're passionate, that is good. And with any luck, both of you will come away learning something. Doesn't mean your mind will change, right? But you'll learn something. Right? Especially in the academic community, that's, I think, what we're meant to do here. I could be wrong. Okay? So John Stuart Mill again, a couple of my favorite authors, right? The person who knows only their side of the case knows a little of that because you haven't been tested. It hasn't been put in the crucible. It hasn't been tempered in the fire. Right? And so that's why I happen to think free and open discussion and free and open debate are so important, particularly in an academic context, which should be the last bastion when all else fails and the zombies have taken over everything else. <laughs> right? Here we should still have free speech and free and open debate. Okay, moving along. Um, now, there are a couple of things that we have to keep in mind as well when we talk about this, and that is the difference between per personal knowledge and common knowledge. Right? The personal knowledge is what you know in terms of your own opinion, your own decisions about right and wrong, and stuff like that. But what we don't know is everybody else's. And this is why in dictatorships, and place religious communities and places like that where <laughs> you don't want them questioned because if you want them questioned, if you get them questioned and they're questioned openly, numbers of people can agree. And then you realize it isn't a monolithic position. Mm -hmm. This is why everybody in North Korea loves their dear leader. Okay, ask any of them. Oh yes, the dear leader. Although the dear leader actually is the head of the country, you guys know that, right? The head of the country is his father who's dead. It's an autocracy. I love it. I don't know if there's, there's a certain amount of irony there. Anyway, moving along. Uh, so uh, I also believe that facts are more important than feelings. Although if you watch a lot of the things that are happening on a lot of campuses, then maybe you should grow up, my opinion. Um, Castigat Redendo Morris, and I love this. And this is... Laughter changes positions. So if you have someone in his position and you ridicule them and you laugh, blah, 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 that people around, and once you point out the absurdity, right, which often is humorous, then people will change their mind. This is why on many college campuses, comics are forbidden, right? Because they point out the ludicrousy of a lot of the kinds of things that happen on campus. And people on campus don't want that, right? And because, and, uh, okay, we'll leave that alone. Well, that's why you can't make jokes, let's say in Thailand, about the king of Thailand. You can't make jokes in North Korea about the, so we essentially can't make jokes about crap that happens here. We live in kind of an academic North Korea-esque. <laughs> okay. The other thing that I think is, because I often ask people, people say, oh, I believe this. I say, well, debate Come in front of a group of folks like you and demonstrate that Wayne's a dick. I'm good with that. I will learn something, right? And the people will receive an edification. The edification is, don't listen to Wayne. I'm fine with that, right? But I very rarely have anybody pick my mouth. Once I had somebody pick it up, and there were two of them. There was a philosopher and a uh, frahat. But this was on consciousness. It wasn't a new social issue. But on social issues, I just don't have. But things like free speech, I say, come and debate me. People don't. I think that that's unfortunate. Because every time someone says no, they won't debate, that lets me believe that their position is probably so weak that it cannot withstand the argument, right? 
So when, when you're not getting anybody nibbling at these kinds of things, we'll get to that a bit later in my principles. How long have I gone? Oh, good God. I'm, oh, oh, no, I started at 4.30, right? Not even an hour. Hey, I've got lots of time. Okay. <laughs> So universities today, these are my opinions, uh, and maybe some people will disagree with me, and I'm good with that. I think for the most part, people are taught uh, what to think, not necessarily how to think. Uh, and I believe that we got some kind of missive a while ago, and people in the psych department can, can, uh, hello, can um, correct me on this, but I believe some kind of missive came down from, from on high that we are now meant to uh, teach values. Uh, I find that frightening, personally. Okay? Um, no debate on important social issues, except for perhaps a couple of folks you might. Um, and maybe it's accepted, maybe it's not. I may, it might depend on the class that you're in. Certainly, if you're in my class, you swear up with me on anything you want, I'm good. Um, <clears throat> except maybe in some sociology classes, and this is kind of my pulpit sociologist. Um, where I've been told by students, because I don't take sociology courses anymore, but I probably should. And am I entitled to free courses here? Yeah. Maybe I should just take sociology courses. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that would be good. I, I would enjoy that. Um, so I've, I've been told the table can sometimes be tilted in, in those particular classes. Um, uh, clubs that don't fit the PC narrative. Again, I've already mentioned this. Uh, there was a club that was defunded or was not permitted to be funded. And there was a bit of hullabaloo about that. And uh, I wrote a letter to the newspaper here, it didn't get published for some reason that I don't understand. Could have been my expletives. No, I didn't do that. Um, and in my classes, I ask students, and I've got several students who've been in my classes, I ask how many people would you know, take issue, we have somebody there, and somebody here. Uh, maybe that's why you guys are here right now, right? But for the most part, I get silence, okay? Nobody wants to tie up. And I have to ask why. Yes? I think the reason we don't talk, speak out if we disagree is we don't have enough information. That may be part of it, of course. Uh, there are normative and informative, uh, sorry, normative and information influences on, um, on conformity. Yeah, we know that. And so if there's not enough information, but even so you can ask for information. You say, that doesn't strike me as being right. Why do you hold that position? Well, I, I think that's a... Uh for excuse, you have the infinite information in your cell phone at But you don't have infinite minutes. time right then. No, no I know. But then you could go away. No, but I mean, right. you have one like you do. question. Yeah. I always Google yeah, yeah, you, and yeah. I'm like, hey, I found an article yeah, yeah. Of, like refuting your yeah. position. Validating my yeah, yeah, points yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I like that word validating. I don't like the word prove. Like can can we say confirmation bias? Confirmation, yeah. You know, yeah. Like yeah. yeah, we could have confirmation Google bias. Google is probably one of the worst sources of well, but then it is information. The other thing is, everybody says, What's the best? I'm not going, I'm not going to go, search. everyone says, don't no, no, use no, Wiki. No, like, How many people have heard that? Prof say, don't use Wiki. Start with Wiki. Then when you get to the references, read the references. Either it's right or it's wrong. Anyway, guys, you guys can fight later. Okay, cool. Um, right, and so I don't, get, I don't get a lot of takers for that. And that, that disturbs me as well. And I tell my students in my classes, anything, anytime, right? I think it's important, bring it up. And, and especially during those little breaks, because I always take, like I do 50 minutes, then I take a few minutes break, 50 minutes, because the literature tells us that that's about the edge of people's high end attention. Maybe the user wants to that they just so easy to go for it. Yeah, and that could be possible as uh, well. But then that speaks to our education system. <laughs> That's what he's okay, that speaks to our Point education proven. system. So, yeah, quad is <laughs> demonstratum. Yes? Isn't that your hand? I wasn't sure if she had her hand up. No, you do. Okay, so if I may, um, if I didn't agree with um, a popular opinion that yeah. a professor had, yeah. I, especially when I was younger, a bit more so now, I might be more comfortable since yeah. I'm older, but I would feel. Um, like I couldn't speak out or I wouldn't just yeah. because the pro I would have the fear, not saying that this would happen, but that the professor would use their platform to um, sort of laugh it off or uh, inadvertently humiliate me by getting everybody else to agree. And sometimes it ne not necessarily opinion. inadvertently. I mean, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, um, like, we, we do have information, we have access to government, but then it's, 
information that actually we want, then why do we have to study for the PhD? I mean, yeah, no, that's that's a higher order thought than is important information. Yeah, so we don't so, understand that. Yeah, um, so just let me wave my hands, and this speaks to the internet problem. Um, I think it's on my door here, uh, certainly on my door at UFB. Uh, I was driving down the road one day, and I was listening to a futurist uh, being interviewed, I think, by one of the barbers on CBC. And uh, he was in education, and she sort of laughed and said, all, you know, she sort of said, well, all the information is on, on, uh, on uh, the internet. What do you say about that? And he said, the problem with knowledge, and she said, all knowledge is on the internet. And he said, the problem with knowledge is you have to know what it means. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the purpose of, of, uh, of uh, education in university, right? Is to figure out what it means, not to have, uh, although you have to have some factoids, okay? I mean, you can't, well, it's, I'm just a higher person. Okay, you know, you can't, you can't be, I, I like at the abstract level, fine. But you need something to like muck about with at the abstract level. Anyway, this is getting a little bit off, but that, whatever. <laughs> okay. Uh, so why not? So let's. And when I, I ask, I say, why not? And what that young woman down there just sort of mentioned: fear, fear of censure by the prof, fear of censure by fellow students, uh, being labeled sexist, rex, racist, homophobic, Islamophobic, xenophobic, pick your nosephobic, whatever it happens to be. <laughs> Okay. Don't forget, don't forget internalized misogyny. Oh yeah, internalized misogyny, and I know that like works for me the same. Um, and whatever other co negative label might be hurled, uh, because that's not a function of debate. That's just a function of you know taking something that stick to you that smells, and hoping it stays, and other people believe it, right? And we'll come back to that as well. Okay. And so, you know what? If somebody's afraid, it doesn't mean. Ah, I mean, what is fear? Right? And I, I ran into this somewhere, and I don't know where it came from, so I can't cite the person. But fear is wisdom in the face of danger. And so it's, sometimes it's very rational to be afraid, right? Especially if you feel powerless or something like that. There are things that can be done to you, and this speaks to your power imbalance as well, right? Okay, so are we all delusional? Uh, most of my students are delusional, maybe they should be on meds. Yeah. Or is there some kind of rational basis for this? Right? So, and you guys can make up your own mind about that. You know, I will motor on now. So I think that a lot, at least in a lot of uh, social areas, education is more indoctrination than it is education. Well, what we call education is more indoctrination than it is educated. I think it promotes, the way it's done, it promotes cowardliness and not courage. Because people become used to being afraid and not saying anything. It's too much of a hassle, whatever it is, right? And that's kind of like um, a classical conditioning. And how many people have heard of Moyer's two factor theory? And of course, most of you should have. So you're classically conditioned about something, and then every time you avoid it, that gets reinforced. Okay? So something like that, perhaps. I'm not saying necessarily, I'm not diagnosing anybody here, I'm not a clinician. Okay, uh, encourage deception and not truthfulness, because if you're asked your opinion, do you actually give your opinion or do you lie? And you guys can decide that for yourself. Some people apparently don't. Uh, other people, I suspect, bend the, the truth. What's that? Depending on the situation. And it might depend on the situation. But in university, why would you ever have to? That's that's my point, mm -hmm. right? That's my point. In a university, you shouldn't have to do this shit. <laughs> right? This is where you should be able to tie up, and we'll get some more of that. Mandates acceptance, as opposed to imaginative questioning and critical thinking and debate. So that's my sort of position about where perhaps we are right now. So we can fix this. Woo! Right? <clears throat> and so uh, I got an ethics for academics. <laughs> uh, although I don't believe in ethics. Yeah, you just said. Uh... No, I don't. But uh, if most people do. So why not propose it and see who bites? <laughs> okay. Actually, I've got some pretty good arguments against ethical positions, but we can do that another time. Against the existence of them? Against the, uh, against the existence of ethics. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, moving along. I, I you probably wouldn't see that if we all got around you and started pummeling you. You um, probably wish there was some. No, no. Well, hold on, hold on. That I, I, prevented us from doing that. Absolutely. Yeah. But that's that doesn't mean there are any. That's just social niceties. Yeah, but right? but you like them being around. 
there are many things I like being around that I don't think they would call ethical. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> us, us not murdering you. <laughs> No, <laughs> let's just move on, okay? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't mean to cut you off, but I want to get through okay. these, and then we can really tie up. And we'll... Okay, so the yeah, first yeah. one, and I see these first three as aspirational, <laughs> right? because philosophically, we could argue that at least the first one is not possible, uh, particularly if you take certain types of postmodernist perspectives on this. And I, by the way, am not a postmodernist, and anybody who is a postmodernist, believe what you want, step off the 10th floor of a building. I'm cool with that. <laughs> okay, that there is there there is no gravity. It's just a social construction. <laughs> <laughs> and deconstructing that is not the fall that kills you. It's the stop at the end. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> okay. okay, moving along. So it is wrong always, everywhere, and for any I stuck that in, and for any epidemic, to believe anything on insufficient evidence. Now this doesn't mean it has to be for sure, for sure, but the evidence has to be strong enough that most other positions are unlikely. Either that or be like the, uh, the, the uh, uh, sophists and suspend judgment, right? So, and if you're suspending judgment, you're not gonna go to the wall for it, and you're not certainly not gonna do anything to anybody else for something that you're not sure of, right? It's people who are sure that I'm frightened. The second one, this was by, and I am not Dutch, Van in Wagen in 1996. This is way back in 1877. Uh, in 1996, it is wrong always, everywhere, and for any academic, and again, I stuck in the for any academic things, uh, to ignore evidence that is relevant to his or her beliefs or to dismiss relevant information in a facile way. And this sort of speaks to your bias thing. Right, my side bias, you tend to say, you know. And Nietzsche actually had a good thing. We tend to value those things we, or, or subject those things with which we agree to less scrutiny than those things we disagree with. And that, of course, is exactly the opposite, as he pointed out, as it should be. Anyway, moving along. So I added this, as far as I can tell, unless it's in, inintentional plagiarism, okay? But I think this is mine. Uh, it is wrong everywhere, always, uh, for any academic, not to actively seek out evidence that is relevant to one's beliefs, especially evidence that is contrary to or stands against one's belief. And this, of course, is the principle of science. Right? So maybe I did plagiarize it from the principle of science. But anyway, it's never been, as far as I can tell, and I did search, it's never been put in quite this way. So I'm claiming it. Does anybody, does it, does anybody watch, uh, what's it called, The Upstart Crow? Oh, you guys got it. Is that on Netflix? Uh, you can get it on um, the iTunes. Okay, you you've got to watch it. It's real. It's Shakespeare. Anyway, moving along. Okay, uh, so does anybody have anything like you'd like to tie up with these th first three? Hmm. Right, knowing that the first one actually is can be considered to be impossible because what does sufficient mean? It means for sure, for sure, mm -hmm. at least in some contexts. And there is no such thing as for sure, for sure. But I think the first one is possible. Um, I think it is, as long as, as long as it's a balance. It just can't be for sure. Belief is a place for, for knowledge. But if we're going to say a lot of people believe things and they claim, I know this, they can't tell the difference between belief and knowledge. No. Right. So if we remove the word belief from it, and to, to, to believe that they know something on insufficient evidence, then it works. The, the problem to is believe belief that is, they know something, so you're adding another... The, the problem is the belief level. we're talking about it's not, I believe, uh, that strawberries yeah, are superior to bananas. It's, I believe that this is the truth. Yeah. I believe that I know this. Yeah. This is the type of belief that's uh, and, and I can the agree with you. Opinion, it doesn't matter. I can agree with you, except that things we accept as knowledge and facts today might not be knowledge and facts tomorrow. So if you look at it actually from a deconstructivist position in terms of putting knowledge in a synchronous or a disynchronous uh, 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 framework, mm -hmm. right? then um, one might argue, and I think one could argue reasonably successfully, that that more, more likely to be aspirational than possible. Uh, but uh, I'm a bit less uh, lax with what I believe I yeah, am. Yeah, that's cool. People are yeah, I'm, I'm not an absolutist as you are, so. Uh, oh, I'm only an absolutist about some things. Okay. <laughs> How we get, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> that's, that seems fallacious. No, 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 okay. no. 
I'm an absolutist about, about some things. About ethics. Anything else? Um, I'm absolutist about torture. Okay, fair. I don't believe a little torture, okay. you know, judiciously well, applied is a good thing. What's that? Don't do any more any Yeah. <laughs> well, isn't that kind of what uh, Stephen Harper was arguing? We'll put this in, say that we can actually torture people, but don't worry, it'll hardly ever be used. Okay, my actual uh, point. I, I also, um, I agree with it because it's a value judgment. What's a value judgment? So, so whether or not it's possible, the principle is still true. Um, yeah, no, and I don't disagree yeah. with you, which is uh, why it's there. It's also hung up. I'm also hung up on the word insufficient as the main reason for believing that this may be um, possible. Okay, I mean, you can rephrase that. You have to have sufficient evidence to believe anything. Yeah, but it's the same thing. Yeah, but then you have to define efficiency. Sufficiency. If and, you believe something, and there's, <laughs> I'm going to bet a long regress of arguments. That it would have to happen about that, and again, this is the form for that. I, I right. I think uh, what, um, what's touched on by that principle is whether or not causal reality. Sorry, exists. being in nothingness. Okay. An A's theorem. Okay. To know you know, you have to know that you know. Yes. To know that you know, you have to know that you yes. know. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, Which is why, if you adopt a causal argument, it would be possible. But anyway, yeah. Totally different discussion. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. But moving along. <laughs> Are we good with moving along? Yeah. No. Yeah. Did I hear a plea? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on. Uh, the fourth principle, it is wrong always everywhere and for all academics to appeal to ad hominem, any kind of personal assault. I mean, I've got the one, you're a white male. Oh, what the fuck's that got to do with anything? Okay. Um, politically correct, bullying, racist, I'm offended arguments. I think that if you hear any academic doing that, you should be ridiculed to death. Okay, people should stand around you and go, <laughs> for long periods of time, maybe follow you up and down hallways. <laughs> so what Christopher Hitchens said, uh, whenever people say that, they, he respond with, I'm still waiting to hear your point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yes, and maybe that's the appropriate response, and I do love Hitch. I do love Hitch, although he's dead. I, I love the memory. Lives on okay, principle five, um, and I see this as kind of like the fifth commandment. Anybody know what the fifth commandment is? Really, you guys kill me. Thou shalt not kill. Oh, that's the sixth. Or is that the sixth? What's the fifth? I don't know. I thought that was the fifth commandment. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> I don't know, I just know it's the sixth. Okay, the sixth commandment. Then, like the sixth commandment, <laughs> just change that to a sixth. Maybe if I do this, it'll change to a sixth. Damn, it didn't work this time. Okay. Is that the sixth commandment? God's been a thousand years since I've read my Bible. Or maybe it's a. No, the fifth is thou shalt not kill. Yeah. Okay, I thought it were. Yeah, the sixth is thou shalt not kill. I was confused about those two. Okay, 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 that was good. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, let's get, let's get, I'm serious again. Okay, that, but that was good. Okay. <laughs> um, so it is wrong always everywhere and for any academic to take an argument personally. Right? And that is the case because it damages relationships. It damages the way the institution works. Right? Then you get all this emotional overlay to Massio notwithstanding, okay, uh, on our arguments. And we should, I think, try to be at least reasonably rational about these things, as opposed to emotional. Anybody want to tie up with me of those? I'm not sure that you, you ridicule people, that's bullying, or bullying as you say out there. Um, oh, did I misspell that too? Yeah. Where's that? Oh, bullying, racist, bullying. You're also missing period. I'm <laughs> bullying. Okay, well, you know what? I think maybe challenge the opportunity might be better. Yeah, maybe we should be challenged in, from my Why don't we just point from my, that from my perspective. Why? That's right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we agree on standards for language. And I, 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 I'm, to, I'm totally good with that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just say why I obviously uploaded the wrong version of my, uh, the one that wasn't proofed. It was in your other pants? It was in the other <laughs> pants. It was on the other, on the other uh, stick. Okay, 
Um, and so, okay, maybe not ridicule, maybe challenge. Uh, I personally think ridicule <laughs> is an important thing. Christopher Hitchens would suggest it is. Uh, Lawrence Krauss suggests that ridicule is an important part of arguing. So, um, I will defer to people who have mathematically proven that the universe can arise from absolutely nothing. Sixth principle. It is wrong always everywhere and for any academic to not publicly debate when asked a position on which she or he holds a public opinion. And that could be a public opinion as stated in the hallways, a public opinion as stated in a classroom. Uh, if a student says, look, you've made this and I know somebody who disagrees with you, you should debate this in public. I think that there is an obligation that they do it, ethics notwithstanding. Okay? Um, and so... Uh, this actually, I think, is a corollary of the third principle, uh, but a way of making it public. And this would demonstrate courage. And I think it's important for academics to, do, to demonstrate the courage. Okay? Anyway, so, or to model it, whatever you want to call it. Principle seven, wrong always everywhere for any academic not to publicly support positions that she or he uh, uh, is in favor of, or not to publicly decry positions that he or she is uh, not in favor of. Okay? And of course, this is, if somebody makes a statement and you disagree with it, you should actually say, I'm sorry, I disagree with it. Um, and then you can invite them to have a debate about it, as opposed to just letting things go and letting things go uh, for the sake of, I don't know why we would do that. Okay? Um, okay. Are we good? No. Or did I miss? Did I there miss isn't enough time in my life to apply principle seven. Yeah. No. You know what? Uh, then apply it judiciously. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have shit to do. <laughs> then apply it only in cases where it's like particularly important. Yes. Whatever it is. Now, you have different times in your life. You're younger than I am, so I actually have less time in my life for it. But still, I think one should tie up. Um, okay. And what about Time notwithstanding. And what about what principle seven? Uh, what happens if the public debate is, let's say, in a either stack position or has. So you, can still, or you can still speak for it or against it. Okay. So let's say you're a proponent, and uh, this is a wild example that you should not hire women. Yeah. Uh, yet the debating uh, for not hiring women jeopardizes your career. Should you do it? Well, you see, and that's another problem, because in an academic facility, it shouldn't jeopardize your damn career. Yeah. Okay? The fact that it does, I think, speaks poorly of any academic community in which it would just jeopardize your career. So is this an absolutely uh, ethical principle, or do you have to... I don't believe in judge? ethics, but this is the best I can do. Yeah. Or yeah. do you have guidelines? Yeah. Uh, or do you make a judgment call? Well, well, of course you make a judgment call. I mean, you can't tilt at every windmill, right? But you pick the biggest windmills to tilt that. I'm really caught up on, on you not believing in ethics. <laughs> this whole lecture is leading to you giving 10 ethical principles. Do you hold these principles to be true? I follow these principles. So um, you follow some ethical principles? I follow <laughs> principles that can be regarded as ethical. You yeah, call them ethical. Hold on. If, yeah, and yeah. you've decried this publicly, so Absolutely. it's a stance you believe. Hold well, that, that's, uh, <laughs> well, that's, that's uh, the little stock is. Okay, okay. Don't attack his logic, that's not at home enough. No, no, that's not at home. I'm not attacking you. Attack my logic any time you want. I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. Okay. But afterwards, um, if you want to tie up a boat exactly that, we can. Okay, yeah, yes, write sir. it down. Yeah, it's not the same as you said, right? I think. Okay, what? No, oh, is no. it the same sort of thing in ethical? It's, it's, it's sort of. Same thing because I was trying to say that ethics is like one ethics is more like a set of rules which students have to follow. Like that. Yeah, but why do we follow them? Uh, my dog follows. Just the rules. <laughs> my dog follows. Yeah, my dog follows rules. the principle: do not pee in the house. Mm -hmm. yeah. That doesn't make that ethical, right? Okay, yes, just like because that. I can beat the crap out of it does not make that ethical. Yeah. Like and that. so, if you want to argue ethics, you either have to derive ought from is. Mm -hmm. And I think Santiana in the late 60s pretty much put A to that in his, in his publication. Or you have to have some other um, uh, absolute principle from which it can be derived. 
So pick a god. Alright. Or permitted to use. I think there are rules. Zeus. What? Right? I think there are rules. Yeah, so there are lots of rules. Yeah. Right? And that so doesn't make them all ethical. Only... No, and eth ethics and rules are not isomorphic. Right? Ethics are a particular type of rule. But they can use them to describe ethics? Yeah, define yeah. ethics. Ethics is a, a set of principles that are meant. Sorry about that. Are we driving you away? No, your value is not my value, so I gotta get another job. Okay. Thank you. Peace out. So, um, ethics are a set of rules that are meant to be um, uh, reasonable, absolute guides to the world. Absolute That's right. Guys. And so, but you have to pick. You have to pick your system. So you can be a nil deontological ethicist. Well, I can. You can be a, a number of different types of uh, utilitarian ethics. You can be an act utilitarianism or real utilitarianism. Know big words, right? Okay, sorry, but these are just different ethical forms. Okay. But the thing is, where do they come from? And so, if you cannot establish a firm foundation for ethics. Then ethics, in my opinion, doesn't exist. Okay. Ethics turns into ethics turns into. I really like vanilla ice cream. I really think anybody who eats chocolate ice cream should be put to death. Okay, and that could be an ethical principle. Right. So, but that is that is a non-cognitive basis for ethics. So, if I'm going to be ethical, I think there are non-cognitive basis for ethics. But then everybody's individual feelings becomes the basis for ethics. And that becomes problematic by itself. So you just don't believe that ethics inherently exist. Is that a better way sure. to sum up your book? Okay. Sure. So it's I, not now, it, now it makes sense. Not there's, 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 the there's, no, there's, no, there's no firm foundation for ethics in my okay. opinion. Rules are so society functions. Sure. Yeah. It doesn't mean they're not. not important. It just means well, no, no. It it don't have an inherent Absolutely. So, okay. I mean, a society could not function without ethical principles, laws, yeah. things like that. But it doesn't mean that laws, even though society couldn't function without them, doesn't mean laws are ethical. Oh, absolutely. Very, absolutely. very, very I agree with things. you there, yeah. Okay. Thank you for clearing that up. Sorry. Uh, I need a bathroom break. No, no, no. You're allowed. <laughs> okay. And why was he suspended? That speaks. They won't, the administration will not speak to why. Of course they won't, because that exactly what I'm speaks. What saying is, it is might be wrong, but boy, do you need to have guts and money to go up against it? Yeah. But you go up against it, that guy doesn't have any pay right now. I don't disagree, and exactly like this. I am on a boat. Somebody's in the water being attacked by a great white shark. I have to make a decision. Do I attack the shark, or do I not? Right, and that's what you're saying here. So, because there are consequences, it doesn't mean the principle is incorrect. Uh, it just there means is a reality you have, in which you have that to pick. You have to pick your battles. Absolutely, there's always a reality in which these things, in which these things operate, sir. If the choice is between attacking the shark and having a five percent chance of living. Or swimming away and having a ninety-five percent chance of living. How do you reconcile that? that that's a decision you have to make. Okay. So this is where you get the idea that we need to be very courageous and very. Absolutely, and that's why I point out courage. Yeah. Uh, and the thing is, in that university, where was it? It's 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 the one in Camden. Right? Yeah. Is Thompson that Thompson Rivers? Rivers? Yeah. Thompson Rivers? Thompson Rivers. If that happens at Thompson Rivers. Then the other faculty members should show courage and should get the fuck out of it. How often the other faculty members are using the predatory journals? Because he published it, he documented it. Um, then all the other ones, the ones who are using the predatory <laughs> journals, might want to stay, and every other faculty member on that campus should be gone. Oh. What? You what know what? There's not. I, I mean, I don't want to. The, the, this, these are principles. People have to decide what to do, right? In, in, in terms of their own self yeah, and decisions. Mm -hmm. So I, what do you do? I, I, I cannot hold, <laughs> I cannot, speaking to your point, if someone were being attacked by a couple of pit bulls and somebody saw that 
and ran away, do I then um, uh, castigate the person for running away? No, that's a decision that that person has to make under those circumstances, right? So you have to decide for yourself. And I'm not saying that these are absolute, that you have to do it. If you don't do it, you're like a horrible person. But these are aspirational. I, I would hope that people would do these things. I think that you have to analyze why this has happened and how we got there in terms of... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking... You, you talked about how things change. <laughs> Principle <laughs> 7. From the number from um, 1980s. So I'd say it started in the 1970s. That there was that shift to neoliberalism, which is being expressed in all facets of our lives now. Hold on. What do you mean by neoliberalism? I mean the movement of money from okay. us yeah, yeah. to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And that is because sometimes you, you people use neoliberalism and neoconservatism. The power of okay. expression we saw we saw it today when they. Postal workers in, in trying to legislate the right to work. Absolutely. Um, we see it all the time. Yep. We see it in the universities. Yep. What I think, I, although it's a wonderful notion that we always say what we think is right, I think it's it's more reasonable to try to analyze why it's happened and how you stop it. How you how you take it back to where it was. Where okay. It was I don't disagree. Came, you know what? Without risking people's lives. Taking your point. I will try to work, rework that. That's like a to whistleblower protection kind of yeah, thing. Well, yeah, or I, I will try to rework that in terms of not necessarily public supporting or public not, but going, and I'll have to think about how to do that in terms of working against that, that trend, whatever it happens to be. But here we're dealing with levels of analysis, right? And so at least on, uh, at some level here, right, uh, we should be able to public to support things that we uh, agree I, with. I agree we should be. Yeah, we should be the able to. The reality's not there. No, and I, I don't disagree with that. And that's what I'm saying. The reality for a lot of these things aren't here. Yeah. Right? Sir? You just said we should be able to. I agree. Yeah. I disagree with it's wrong if we don't. It's a matter of choice whether we do or not. We should be able to if we choose to. Um, well, you have to determine what hill you're going to die on. You can't die yeah. on every hill. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. right. Okay, but by that matter, so I agree with you in a wholeheartedly <laughs> that you can't simultaneously advocate free speech, but then say it is wrong if you don't say this. How, like, I'm not, I agree with all of your principles thus far, mm -hmm. but to what extent is this indoctr indoctrination? <laughs> you know, like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Every, every, t every time you take a position, sure. right, I'm not forcing it on you. There's no way no, 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 that no, you no. have to uh, write an exam and write this shit down. Yeah. Okay. However, I would like you to think on it. No, absolutely. Right? And I'm, we've got a couple of different points here yeah. that I perhaps will try to, and one of the purposes of doing this is to have this kind of interaction and debate so that we can examine those principles. Absolutely. And I think the biggest difference is consequences. There is no consequences of you telling Wayne that you don't agree with that. But there is I've never gotten the consequences <laughs> for telling professors that Lucky I, you. Yeah. I know, and yeah. it is lucky. Yeah, yeah. so, I, so um, I think that is the difference. I think, the I think there's some the other problem. glaring problems, so we'll get back to those later. Sure. Number eight. Number eight. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? There's ten. Sorry, I'm partially deaf, so if people say stuff like, and I don't hear, it's like, I will, what? And I, I always assume that any anybody says anything, that of course it's all about me. <laughs> Which is why I'll always question. Okay, so um, it is wrong always everywhere for any academic to punish or condemn or punish a person for holding or speaking an idea uh, the receiving academic believes is wrong or evil. Right? Why? You should engage yourself, I think. Did I write that? It is right for an academic to debate and educate. Uh, that I, uh, well, that's another missed thing, okay? Educate that person, uh, sorry, to address that idea, to educate the person uh, concerning, concerning the fact or merit of holding an idea. So I think you should engage, right? But not punish, right? And so punishment could be anything like being fired or suspended without pay or being pummeled in the streets. Yes? Is ridicule the best way to engage? 
Well, probably not. Is I've, it a necessary? I've told, way no, it's not necessary. I just have so to that like your personal. It. Okay. I just have to like it. Okay. Ask, okay. People, ask people who know me best. I, I, just, I just really have to like it. Okay. So that's a, a my side bias. Yeah. Just say it. Okay. Uh, position nine. It is wrong always and everywhere for any academic to ascribe uh, belief in a position to another on the basis the other person expresses or argues that position. I can argue anything. I can take a devil's advocate position about anything. Doesn't mean I believe it. As a matter of fact, the mark of an educated mind is to be able to hold counterfactual positions, right? Or positions that you don't necessarily agree with and argue them. And lots of times you might want to do this to find the strengths and weaknesses in others' arguments or to learn as much as you can. So that should never happen, which is why you should never hear anything like, you're racist, sexist, homophobe, dickhead. Okay, just saying. Principle the 10th. It is wrong always and everywhere for any academic not to defend the right of any person to make any statement in any venue which the person is stating a position or making an argument. This comes back to exactly what you said about you know, other faculty members not decrying at Thompson Rivers or wherever it was. Okay. Please. Thank you. Uh, this is this is the a question that I had around principle six, let's say. Um, and I thought that, uh, well, no, 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 it, it's more relevant to principle 10. Um, fascism inherently rejects reason. Um, it inherently uh, dislikes uh, the concept that one can achieve enlightenment through education. Uh, it is characterized by complete absorption of emotion, fear, pride, based on identity politics. Um, usually through nationalism that is usually inherently racial, but in the case of Mussolini, uh, that doesn't necessarily need to be the case. Um, I okay. argue that these principles don't fight fascism as well as we might hope, and in fact, giving people specifically um, fascists, uh, for example, Steve Bannon, uh, was recent. Well, he's Steve not. He's not a fascist. Sorry, Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon so is populist. Uh, he, he's he's a populist who has uh, been the campaign manager for a variety of political campaigns, starting with Trump and then moving okay, to Poland Steve and to Italy. Um, he is responsible, um, or, or many people um, have cited him as being responsible uh, for giving rise to populism, to ultranationalism. Um, to a rejection of reason uh -huh. um, in, in this coming, uh, okay. you know, time. That he, he, and, and he has debates. One though. second, let me finish my slide, okay. if I can. Um, so, uh, I believe that by giving fascists a space to speak, we actually encourage the rejection of reason. And I see it as a counterexample. Yeah. Um, see, I, I actually disagree with that position. Okay. Because uh, if you don't give fascists a place to speak, then where do you engage them? On the internet where they're anonymous. No, no, no. Like, re no really, no, that, that you, is what you, that want, is what, what you want to do yeah. then is you want them to de anonymize themselves. Absolutely. Be in I agree. Like this and tie up with them. I agree. Right, right now, you see, the, the problem is you have a very optimistic view whereby. Well, I'm not an optimist. You can ask. No, no, no. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Uh, I'm sorry that I mis uh, misattributed that to you. Um, I don't identify as nothing. Okay. <laughs> let me let me correct myself. Um, so there there was a there was an op-ed done. Um, uh, I forget the article uh, or, or uh, the journal it was placed in, but it was called I, I debated Steve Bannon and it didn't turn out the way I thought. Um, there were eye clickers in every hand of the audience uh, that gauged um, people's responses okay. uh, to the debate at hand, okay. and Steve Bannon was being debated. Uh, by somebody who was advocating for um, a, 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 a liberal position. Uh, and I'm talking about a, a classical liberal uh, adoption. It, it Reason, like yes, that. absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, which is similar to the stances that you have been making here. Yeah. Um, I, I see myself as a sort of classical Yeah, like absolutely. And I, and I see that as well. Um, I read the article. Um, at first, people are buying at Bannon and, and saying, oh, yeah, he's a racist, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The night goes on. Mm -hmm. And um, people start to sympathize with his feelings as he's making more emotional arguments. Okay. 
by the end of the night, the majority of this university educated room, okay. which I, I know one of the premises of yours is that universities haven't been fostering reason right now. Uh, and that's uh, fair. I, 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 I see that as an indictment of whatever universities these people went to. Personally. But I think that's that's not a fair or of course it is. assumption to make. Hold it, hold it. The difference between fair and scientific. Fair, no, right. for sure, for sure. Um, um, I doubt if anybody's done any research specifically on that. I don't However, think it's research has been or done. inclusive. I don't think it's fair or scientific, the statement you made right there in response to me. Why not fair? Um, oh, that's fair. So, <laughs> um, okay. okay, let's say the first half was me making a subjective point. Uh, scientific, though, I, I don't think that... Um, the studies have been done. No. So, uh, so I don't know how to... This is hearsay, but so is I hearsay that you've said that a lot of people say that in sociology classes... Yeah, no, I get I, no, So absolutely. hearsay is going to that need is, to be engaged. Hold it, that is a, um, call it a, uh, a selective sample. Yeah, and I sort of pointed Yeah, out. and I did too. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Um, but, so just... I like, uh, give me the print... I like sort of... So your point is that Steve Bannon, because he was convincing a large crowd of people, who he started be out from a liberal standpoint. No, not that. Well, no. Maybe I, yeah, no, don't. You don't have it. Don't violate sense. the principle. Yeah. Me. I'm not I saying that he should be silenced. I just don't know how to reconcile in these let coming it be. times. Let it be. Yeah. There are many things that are bring very up valid good. points of counter. The difficult. problem is fascism rejects reason. It rejects Hold arguments. Hold on. Says who? No, well, you said he's bad and he's not a fascist. You said so yourself. Sorry, uh, uh, postmodernism does yeah. any identity politics does. It does, yes. Okay, so you can pick almost anything and it rejects reason. It, it, it rejects rege reason on a philosophic ground. It does. And actually, I have, I believe it was a quote from Mussolini, it's on my phone somewhere, yeah. that says essentially what it is is it's power. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, that's on, on fascismo, right? I believe that, that is it's, it's on that do it anymore. It's sure. on fascism. Okay. Yeah. So um, uh, I don't know specifically what you can do about that, but I don't think squashing debate uh, with people with whom you disagree because they happen to be better, better debaters than you are is necessarily the way to go. I don't I think, think it makes them a better that. debater. I just think that sure, when you tap into people's fear, well, that, that is more powerful. It's the use. Of, it's the use of rhetoric as opposed to yes. Positive. And if people in universities were a little better educated, they <laughs> they'd identify rhetoric. They might be able to identify right. the difference between rhetoric and also central versus peripheral roots. To be straight, yes, right? absolutely. So um, I still stand by my I, I position. Still do, I personally do as well, okay. but so, I'm saying I don't know how to reconcile oh, that. You know, if I knew how to reconcile everything, I think instead of calling me Wayne, you'd just be calling me God. <laughs> <laughs> so, a simple your holiness report. Just letting you know. Yeah, um, absolutely. I don't sit in the magisterium uh, yeah. and uh, have uh, and uh, 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 speak ex, ex cathedra right. on anything. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I think the solution to whatever that problem is is that people should be educated as thinkers, yes. not as repositories of trivia that they have to regurgitate them exams. That's the big problem. You're not getting any fight from me. No, I know, but yeah. and these, these principles, none of them are applicable until that's been achieved. It's okay for oh no, like, no, no, no I, I, I think, like, I think we're, are, we're thinking about the common. No, world. I think that is at least partially the road to Damascus. Okay, I think these things at least are some of the cobblestones on that road. Right, mm -hmm. that would be my opinion. Right. So hang on. Uh, yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see just because. We've taken up a lot of air. For sure. If anybody else needs has anything to or sir? I just wanted to address something early on when like people are calling you a white male or anything. I think um, systemic racism doesn't exist, or if it did, it's in the past and it's a lie. Because the reason that is is uh, this is like my father came to this country and he had incidents of racism, but like. He was allowed into this country by Trudeau the first, and uh, <laughs> and um, and you know he got a job as a mechanic, city of Vancouver. He had kid, wife. I I was allowed into public schools. Not like they're like, oh, you're brown skin, you can't go into public school. I get health care. 
So I'm never discriminated by this system per se. Is there incidents of racism still? Sure, Absolutely. very few. But I don't think the system itself is racist. So to say that whole power structure because you're white male is, I think, is a lie. Okay, I, and that is a different topic. Yeah, no, but, but people I, I brought it up to. earlier yeah, about yeah. you yeah. bringing up points, and you should be able to just because you're. No, I don't think that was. I don't think that was the point. Actually, yeah, but yeah, that was a, a, a counterexample. Oh, okay. so and that's that's totally fine. You can't hang people. I think that's what that principle what is. What's that Proposition Nine? What? Yeah, let me just change transport to Proposition Three. <laughs> oh, did I go from principle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, so principles, principles, <laughs> propositions, propositions. We don't have principle not eight or nine. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we have twenty, 20 rules. Uh, you know what? I should. Pro I should. Pro yeah. Thank you. I should probably change the ball to proposition. <laughs> <laughs> so principles. That would be a good. Idea. My point was when I was making the point that you are white, white male. Uh, straight. Oh. <laughs> I'm a rainbow. <laughs> I was making a, I was trying to bring up the fact that that would be used against somebody. Yes. Who, which would, one of your arguments here mm -hmm. is it's important to, to air those things. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. Yeah. And it's also a thing that the tide has changed now. Because before it was white pitted against minorities, but then when people started to realize Oh, minorities have opinions too. Yeah. Uh, they they could they? really lump them together. Mm. Well, no, 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 they don't think so. Uh, well, because when when you have a pain like what you said earlier, then then you have internalized uh, racism because you don't recognize there's systematic racism. So <laughs> now now that minorities are actually speaking up, like no, actually no, don't speak for me. Yeah. You have no idea what, how I feel. Yeah. So I think with that, it is important that minorities start to speak out and so. and do those things. So because you, when you, white people do it. Are you kind of telling me that I can't actually speak for you? Is that what you're telling me? You can. I'll give <laughs> okay, you a white cool. pass. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I get a yellow pass, a brown pass. <laughs> <laughs> Any other passes? <laughs> but the thing is, yeah. uh, I, I, I would like to address you, if that is okay. Yeah, of course. Um, oh, what's your name first? Sanji. Nice to meet you. Nice. Um, I would like to ask you uh, a question. First of all, I'd like to say respectfully, uh, I don't personally hold your position that there's no such thing as systematic racism. Okay. Systemic. Sure, I've heard. There's a difference. There is. Think. Um, I think that there's both, actually. Uh, but that was a slip of the tongue. Okay. Um, <laughs> but one of them is much more pessimistic and not nearly based. Give on me that. laws right. that discriminate. Not laws. Okay. Not necessarily. Well, okay. okay. I, I could, but um, don't do statistics. No, no. Oh, okay. statistics. Not you can not use statistics. Not Canada. Canada. Oh well. Okay. You I might just said in Canada. Canada. I, I, I lived in Florida for two years. In Nigeria. No, but let's not go. I, I live in Canada. Okay. I live okay. in Canada. I'm talking about the system yeah. I'm in. No, 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 for sure. But I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about Western culture and Western society in general. I know, but so, so me, I, I don't think I don't live in that Florida. It's not, no, you don't. But yeah. you know what? Like Damn. political movements <laughs> spread across oh, borders. Yeah. You see that in any of the major world wars. These ideas. Um, uh, Address the systemic hey, racism. Hold, hold on. What okay. I'm going to do That's is sort of play, play moderator here a yeah. little bit. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is because we are way away from this stuff. <laughs> we can, this, yeah, stuff this, stuff. this stuff was meant. To, I just want to hear systemic racism in Canada right now. Yeah, but no, in a when, 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 when this is done in a couple of seconds, okay, okay. Sure. then you guys can like. We can go up to a pub after this. And, and I'll, be, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to play. Oh okay, hey, now, guys, hush. Hush, please. Yes, I smoke weed. Um, I, was, um, I was just thinking about. Um, I, I think that the racism still exists in Canada. I'm not sure about what's systematic or systemic or whatever. Yeah, I but know. like as a like as a Chinese, I I used to put like I know I can speak Chinese in my resume, and I was told that that might imply I'm Chinese, so I, my English is my is not my first language, so it makes me less likely to be hired. But okay, there are two there are two questions here, and again, it doesn't speak to this at all. Okay, but there are two questions here. Number one is if uh, a level of English proficiency that you don't have is one of the criteria for being hired, mm -hmm. 
then I don't see that as being a big issue because that criteria could be higher. If it's because you're Chinese, then I see that as a problem. Okay, and when that happens, I personally think that it should be brought up. I, and uh, to quote somebody who some of you probably know, I would be happy to stand shoulder to shoulder with you and fight it anytime, anywhere. Okay? Because I don't say my English proficiency is not good, but that implies I'm a second language. English is my second language, and that implies like so. It may or it may not. I mean, it all depends on the system. If you, I bet you, if you tried to get a, sorry, I'll be with you in a second. If you um, were to apply uh, to certain shops, for example, in Richmond, you might find it an advantage. Right. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Right. Whereas if I say, I'm uh, pretty Anglo, and then that might stand against me if he hired no shops. But I'm not sure I call that racism. I'm well, not going to say that's it. incident too. That's not. That's one employer yeah. discriminating. Yeah. So that's not a law against. So hang on a second. This hiring. person then you. Okay. okay. Do my best, Queen so, <laughs> You said that. Uh, how do I find out that I've actually been rejected from a job or whatever it is on a racial basis? That's very difficult for an individual. It really is very difficult for an individual. Often, I think. Yeah, I think that they use, that is. They the use reason. statistics. Yeah. However, statistics are really a double-edged sword. Well, you got to be really careful about that. So, an example. Back in the 1970s, uh, with the rise of the feminist movement, uh, it was noted that about 60% of uh, uh, university students were male and 40% were female. This was seen as de facto evidence of sexism. Today, look around your classes, 60 to 70% are female, right? And the rest are male. And so it switched. Is that, is that evidence of systemic sexism against males? That's the question you have to ask. Because if the statistics are the same for both, right, the logic should be identical. Yes. That's a false yeah. argument because you're assuming no. that I identified with the original logic. No, you're no, I'm, I'm talking I, to him. I'm not talking okay. to him. Okay, but what I'm saying is your stance in general, your argument has the whole of assuming that he agrees with premise one. And you haven't verified Which that is he agrees with premise one. That's one, second, one second. One second. Yes, yes. understood. Um, but uh, if he does not agree, um, that it would have been de facto sexism or evidence of, of sexism. No, it was held as de facto evidence of sexism. Yeah, okay, so it was back then, and because those people back then believed that, should somebody not believe that it's de facto evidence of sexism now, yeah. then the question. they're logical. So if the, if, the, if the evidence is identical, it's just that uh, it's the philosophical principle. Yes, if no. person P in situation S, yes. Yeah, and uh, C is the conclusion. Yes. Person P2 in situation S, C should also be the conclusion. And if yes. it's not the conclusion, you have to you have to uh, uh, you have to demonstrate yes. that the situation is sufficiently different that you don't have to accept that evidence in the same way. I think the burden of proof should be on you here. <laughs> what? These I don't. I don't. Because I don't, you're I don't, the one making the argument. No, I don't. I don't need to uh, make any proof. I'm saying that. This was considered. I think the, the burden. Fact, hold on. This right. was considered mm -hmm. the fact of evidence of sexism. Yes, I agree. Exactly the same thing as backwards. Mm -hmm. Should it still be considered yeah. the fact of evidence of sexism? That's all I'm saying. Sure. I, I haven't made any positive say. I'm not saying that it is evidence of sexism. Okay. I say, look, if the argument is, if the argument follows in one case, it should also follow in the other. Yes. That's all I'm saying. That's yes. all I yes. said. Okay. Right. Um, sorry, Miss. I got That's totally okay. tied up. Um, what I wanted to say is more. In response to your question about um, feeling like you didn't get hired because uh, um, it's not my feeling. It's when I was, it's actually happening down there in the office, in the yeah. office. When I was trying to do my resume, the, the counselor told me um, I should probably get rid of that sentence. Yeah, and I think that's not fair because if um, it's a, there's a difference between if you're brought into the interview and they find that, okay, maybe you're in that's a different story than looking at your resume and saying she speaks Chinese, therefore she may not be good at English. So we need to consider her. I don't think that's fair. Oh, oh no, and it certainly wouldn't be fair if it's, if it's done. And things like this have been done, right? Where they've done uh, male and female uh, names on resumes, um, uh, white and black names, 
whatever black name is. Uh, but no, that's what this says in the paper, so uh, uh, on, on resumes. And they find that there's a statistically uh, significant difference in whether or not they're called for, um, for interviews. And so there is evidence for that kind of thing. I'm not saying there's not, okay? Uh, the question is, if we're talking about systemic racism, then you have to find it from top to bottom, or bottom to top. Okay. Okay. Not just in individual instances. If, if I may get it, go off topic for like 20 seconds. It's not like we haven't been. <laughs> so, uh, about the advice you were given, I would say it was bad advice. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. first, an extra language is never a detriment. Mm -hmm. And second, what is your name? Um, hi. Is your name on your CV? Yeah. Then it would be obvious that then you should yeah. probably not be your first language. As much as the fact that you say that you speak Chinese, you know? Yeah. So I think what you last that advice was just like L-I-N. Yeah, well there you go. So <laughs> they were, they were <laughs> anyway, and, uh, and I was going to suggest that perhaps the counselor driven was that well it was it was yeah, bad advice, fear driven, and she had no proof that yeah. she'd get rejected, wasn't tested. Anyway. Just a summary, just a lot of resumes. I have people like. But it's not racism. It's like, well, can yeah. this person do this job? Colleen McDonald. I think I want a job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We <laughs> <laughs> don't get any further. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Hush, hush, please. Yes, miss. So I have a question about. Um, okay, so sometimes when it comes up in classes, the, uh, I, I took a criminology class. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so there's always different type of uh, theories. Mm -hmm. And then one always have to be uh, feminist theories. Mm -hmm. So, the, I mean, it, because it's not a huge portion in the class, mm -hmm. but it is in the textbooks and it's treated like a fact. And, it, and uh, the... Uh, Evidence provided is nowhere near the other theories that they provided, but it's treated like it. Mm -hmm. So, but then when I bring up, okay, why why is this here? This is an opinion piece from mm -hmm. feminists, mm -hmm. which is fine, but it shouldn't be treated like the other theories. Mm -hmm. But then uh, people will say, okay, well, you know that that's not really, you know, the, the bulk of what we're talking about. So we're just gonna leave that there. And then also you talked talk about earlier that. Um, People from the uh, women's study group don't like to debate either. Yeah. Well, that was so, my experience with women's studies courses, but that was a long time ago. Maybe they've changed. But then they just kind of wiggled in there and stayed yeah. there. Yeah. And then every single textbook, it seems to have feminist theory over here. Yeah. And then that's maybe something that uh, when people uh, become big people and are academics in their own right, they might want to take that on directly in the press, right, through the journals. So, if you can get published. So... For those kind of things, even if you express uh, disagreement with it, you can only really change it at... Well, hold it. You've got 35 people in your class, yeah. right? So we start with the 35, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And if you're convincing for them, maybe they will take it out and they'll tell two people and they'll tell two people, and pretty soon everyone will be using Clairol and they'll understand. What was that? What was the commercial? You tell people, two people, and they tell you, support a hair color product. L'Oreal, was it? L'Oreal. You tell two people and they tell two people and eventually everybody's using L'Oreal. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so um, I pretty much <laughs> shot my bolt. Uh, however, um, conclusion. So I actually believe in these principles uh, and I will start calling them propositions. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, for any academic, there. Yeah, for any academic, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll change the other ones that don't match, just for consistency's sake. Uh, uh, and I think it should actually be everywhere that these principles would apply. Uh, unfortunately, um, it's very difficult to apply them in the broader context unless the education system actually does its job at this end. 60% uh, apparently of people in British Columbia have undergraduate degrees or better, right? If we were doing our jobs, then I think that much of this would be moved. I wouldn't be standing here because it would already be in place, my opinion. Okay, uh, and I, thi I think they follow some of the basic principles from 
Epitetius, who had a lot of Greek philosophers, well, actually, he was Roman, but he was a Greek slave. He was a Roman slave as a Greek. Anyway, uh, Voltaire, Mill, Paine, and other thinkers of the classical uh, and, and Enlightenment period. Mm -hmm. So that would lead to this. I, I think that we could do it. We could restore real education. We could educate our students to think for themselves. I think it's one couple of the cobblestones on the road. Uh, we would model courage for our students, which I think academics sometimes have a problem with. Uh, we would help our students be more resilient because they'd actually have to tie up with, uh, with ideas uh, with which they disagree or with which they find moderately offensive or whatever it is. I would certainly get them to think on the feet better than they do now, I think. Uh, no, so you think three times in that one statement. Well, there you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, we would uh, model risk taking and dealing with failure. So, for example, anytime you debate someone in public or present anything, you're taking a risk, right? So you can model that. And if everything goes wrong, which it easily could have done, uh, then I could show you how I cry in a corner. <laughs> in a safe space. In a safe space. Oh, I meant to take my safe space bear from the, the, the stuffed toy. I meant to take that from my office. Damn. Uh, just in case anybody needed a safe, cuddly thing. Okay. Anyway, um, uh, I think it would reduce the need for government, uh, major information corporations, and our superiors to have to protect us from fake news. And I don't know if anybody's following this, but it looks like governments, uh, Google, um, uh, Facebook, uh, these are going to start screening the information we're getting. And if you don't find that scary, <laughs> then, then fuck, I don't know what to say. Okay, um, so now we will be getting the truth. Da, da, da. <laughs> uh, uh, I also think that it would reduce polarization because we'd be discussing things with each other. It wouldn't be them bad people over there and us good people here and, and uh, the damn lefties and the asshole nasties on the right. Okay, it wouldn't be there because you know when people tie up with each other, what? usually it's the case that everyone has something to say, and usually it's the case you can learn stuff from everybody. Uh, and I know this is kind of a large claim to make, but I think we could actually save democracy. Just saying. Okay. End game.